Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 191, the ultimate mashup, fired up Culture Club Zanata. That's right. <laughs> little karma chameleon for you there, Tyler. Uh, for those of you too young, look it up. Uh, all righty. So, Tyler, we've got a special guest today. We've got Chris Eric from Fired Up Culture, which explains part of our title. And uh, <laughs> Chris has been a client of ours for a long time, and now we're a client of his. And uh, we basically wanted to have Chris on because he's a Zoho user and um, really focuses on a lot of the things that matter to a lot of our clients, which is what's their culture? How do they get the most out of their employees? what motivates people, all of those kind of things. So we thought it'd be interesting to have you on, kind of go through the news, Chris. You can, you know, if you got anything you want to throw in there, we'd love to hear from you there. And uh, we'll go through all this stuff. So welcome, Chris. Thank you. Good morning, gents. It's uh, wonderful to see you. And, uh, you know, sometimes you look at your calendar and you go, is this going to be a good day or a bad day? And today I got really excited to see your guys' name on there. So glad to be with you. Oh, Did you get fired up, Chris? Up. <laughs> I am fired up. Fired. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a great show. Uh, with that, let's get right to the events. <laughs> so we have a couple of things coming up. Zoho has got AI and in BI, Automating and Accelerating Business Insights. Uh, this is going to be basically Zoho Analytics. You can register for that. They also have an upcoming webinar on Zoho Invoice, uh, Strategic Approaches to Employee Experience and Engagement, The Basics of Zoho Sign. It's really good to see all this stuff um, coming up here in March. Oftentimes, you know, there's not a lot of events, but Zoho has turned it up, Tyler. Yeah, there was kind of a drought for a while, like late 2021, it seemed like we were the only one kind of doing webinars and events and uh, the events page was a little bit barren with only our stuff on there. So uh, kudos to the Zoho teams kind of getting the engine rolling again and uh, putting out this type of uh, helpful content and training. So make sure to check those out always if you're using any of those apps. Yep, just head over to zanata.com slash events, and you can see all of the upcoming events in the world of Zoho. And with that, let's get right on into the Love was easy when your thoughts were like my dreams, those golden dreams. Oh, sorry, I've got the karma chameleon thing going here. Um, all right, so getting right to it, Tyler. Uh, uh, this is big, biggest news we've had all year from Zoho. You now have custom Absolutely. emojis and stickers and click. <laughs> yeah, so this one, this is a need to have. Um, you know, hard to recommend click before the rollout of this update. But now we can fully and holistically rep or recommend you Zoho click. Uh, basically, what you can do here is just grab any silly stuff off the internet and add it in as a kind of custom sticker or emoji that you can use to send to anybody. Um, a lot more kind of quick reactions as well, using emojis within Click. Um, and then last but not least, dropping in some custom stickers for Click meetings. I think those just kind of stick up on the page when you're having a team meeting. Um, all kidding aside, stuff like this is fun, uh, nice to have. I actually did see when they posted this, some Zoho partners uh, pretty excited about it because I guess Slack has always allowed you to do this and some people migrating to Click. It's just like, you know, it's not a reason that you wouldn't use the app, but it's just one little thing you might lose. Uh, so kudos to the Click team for a little kind of fun update here for their application. Yeah, and I've actually got like uh, three or four animated GIFs. Yes, it's pronounced GIF. I'm sticking with that. That uh, I uh, use all the time in texting, but, you know, you can never really bring them in easily into Click. You guys mm -hmm. just look forward to that. I've got some good ones in there, so uh, I'm going to bring those on in. All right, and uh, advanced campaigns and regular campaigns are now merged um, inside of Zoho Campaigns. This is a small little update, um, but one that I think avoids a lot of confusion. You know, In the past, if you were to look up, if you're watching us on YouTube, um, I'll open this image here in a new tab. But basically, before when you're going to do a campaign, you had regular campaigns, social campaigns, advanced campaigns, SMS campaigns. Now they've just taken regular and advanced and called them email campaigns. So you can pick everything from one, one little thing. Just a little bit of simplification there. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this was really only something that would cause people to miss this functionality because you go in to send a campaign and you just happen to not click into that menu. Um, so nice to have. I mean, no reason to really split these up, right? They're still going to show up in a big list that you're going to pick from. Uh, I would imagine this is just going to make sure that more people see that, you know, it can do A-B testing and it can do survey campaigning and, you know, some of those things that were just another layer deep inside of campaigns. Yep. And this next one is kind of cool. They're calling these admin pools for Zoho CRM. Uh, basically, what they're letting you do is go through and look at your templates, your custom views, your workflows, and reports, and you can filter them based upon when was the last time they were used, uh, all you know, what those kind of things. When was the last time they were opened? When was the last, any of that? Um, and I like this. Funny, I went through. I think in our leads, I think I started with leads or contacts, and. Um, did a filter of, you know, nothing that had been opened or used in the last uh, year. And there were about, you know, 40 custom views mm -hmm. that hadn't been used the last year. So it's a good, easy way to kind of clean up, uh, clean up your custom views. Yeah, I mean, I think for organizations, especially larger organizations, as they kind of continually adjust and improve their CRM, and especially if there might be a change in stakeholder for the CRM, um, you know, there could be a lot of feature creep right, where things were built and they were used back then, but now they're not being used anymore. Uh, and it creates a scenario where a new stakeholder comes in and it's just overwhelming and you don't really know, is this view important? Is this workflow active? Is this workflow being used realistically and regularly? Um, so just being able to quickly figure out, you know, who made it, when's it last been used, and can I just go ahead and delete this? It's just going to save a lot of time. Again, especially for either kind of power user types or those large organizations that are continuously adjusting and improving uh, in the CRM. It's a really nice one to yeah, have. I, I do think it is it is only offered in the uh, enterprise and ultimate edition of the CRM, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'd imagine that that's really the only place you're going to need it is if you're on those levels. Uh, maybe we want to double check here, but I think, I think it's for only text. for those kind of top two tiers. Yeah, we we'll actually have to go through this as a team. I did leads. I didn't think that was that big a deal, but I thought, you know what, let's take a look at, uh, I was going to do some custom views and, you know, cleaning out contacts and accounts, but I thought we should all do this as a team in case, you know, we deleted it's a custom view that is being used <laughs> on the back yeah. end for something, but it's nice, very nice, nice way to clean things up. All right. Absolutely. And with that, we will move on to more CRM news. This is very very, very nice. Um, individual records and groups can now be shared or individual records can now be shared with roles and groups. Um, if you're not familiar with this and Todd, I'm really going to let you take this one away. But, you know, in the past, if you wanted to share something, you had to individually share that record. So, you know, if you wanted to yep. share 15 records with a person, you had to go into each record individually and share it. Um, I was unaware of the 10 user limit on that. Um, we can mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit more, but now I think it's really going to simplify things, Tyler, right? Because you've got the, I mean, this is kind of a need to have, um, you know, there's, you might have a team of, you know, 12, 13 people that fill a specific role at your company and, you know, maybe certain deals need to be shared with that team so that they can do some type of on-site review or technical proposal that needs to be made. Um, but they're never really going to be the owner of that record. Um, previously, the only way to do that was to share the record with users. So I'd have to go through and pick, okay, John's going to have access, Susie's going to have access, uh, you know, Chris is going to have access. Uh, basically, what they're doing now is if I go to share that record, I can just say everybody on the technical proposal team, whether that's a group or a role, can have access to this particular record. Um, very, very nice, especially again for large organizations where that limit of 10 is kind of a, a roadblock, right? Because you could have teams or groups that have more than 10 people through them. Um, so really nice to have. I'm interested as well to see, and I'll have to do a little bit of testing. You can share a record via um, API. So you can actually automate that a record gets shared with a certain user. Um, really interested to see if they are going to support that for roles and groups as well. Um, I would imagine maybe roles, maybe not groups, just because of how they have it set up behind the scenes. 
Um, but nonetheless, really nice to have, uh, especially again, for those larger organizations where you're really doing things on a team basis, not an individual basis. Yeah, I am baffled though by the TED user limit. It's still in effect. Um, mm -hmm. 10 users, five roles, five groups for a record. Um, that could affect enterprise. And I guess it's not bit. clear if there's, you know, 12 users in a role, is that going to supersede that limit? I would imagine that they're kind of separate, but I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah. Oh, so, so you, you're looking at this individually, so you could share it with 10 I'm users thinking, or yeah. five and roles. Then, and if there are 30 people in a role, all 30 get it. It should be that way. Case. I guess we'll have to test okay. that and confirm But It doesn't, it doesn't know. explicitly say here how exactly that's going to shake out. All righty. And work drive <laughs> has got a dot release, a uh, 3.0. Um, this baffles us sometimes these dot releases, certain products seem to have <laughs> numerical, uh, uh, releases assigned to them. Certain ones don't, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, 3.0, this is part one. They're running through a lot of the changes that they have here. Um, so you've got, you know, this is a crack up. You can now start building work drive using APIs. Oh, um, don't tell us how we started while, doing that about a year ago. <laughs> yeah, we, we started a little ahead of schedule, it seems like, because we've been using those APIs for about a year. Um, but we, previously, they lived in a little writer document that was publicly published. Now they've actually gone through, made the whole web page for it with all the links and backfills and everything. So a lot easier to work with there. But a lot of other updates kind of coming out along with 3.0 around sharing. Yeah, you've got, well, a lot around just optimizing team folders. You can now pin folders. You can, you know, look at your folder, see who's joined, who hasn't joined, uh, all kinds of stuff around that. You know, really just seeing what's happening. You know, you can show only team folders. You can have all kinds of different views uh, that are mm -hmm. super, super nice. Uh, you know, additionally, this is, I like this a lot. This came up the other day. Um, you can duplicate a team folder. So if you got a folder that's only shared with certain people, but you want, kind of want to duplicate it, maybe take two, three things out of it, right? But the rest of the content's mm -hmm. good and share it with another group of people. You can now. That's super, super helpful. Um, you know, content visibility, they've kind of put together a condensed mode. Um, mm -hmm. So just getting more things on the screen, taking out some of the details, uh, which is which is nice. Um, can access folders uh, offline now on mobile devices as well. Uh, I don't nice stuff. Nice stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we love us. Yeah, Work Drive Genie beta for Mac. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show um, and talk to you about what that does. It's got some cool things that are associated with it as well. Standardizing your document formats and your templates. You can now segment and organize your templates as well, and you can search for templates. Uh, you know, preview enhancements. There's just a lot here. Absolutely. As I mean, it's one of those apps time that gets better and better. Yeah. Like it's already good, right? But it just gets better. Um, we use it all the time. I mean, just having a document storage app that's so tightly integrated with your CRM and with desk and with books and where data can just flow around so easily um, is just super nice. And we find just more and more use cases all the time for using WorkDrive. Uh, so kudos to that team. I mean, it's a, it's a killer app in terms of the Zoho One ecosystem. Let's check in with Chris. Chris, are you still fired up? Does this fire you up? <laughs> I am still fired up, guys. I uh, I actually was going to jump in here a little bit, and uh, people don't necessarily know how we use Zoho. We can get into that in a second. But I, I love the news segment because it feels a little bit like Christmas. Every Friday morning, you get to find something <laughs> new, something that you can think about, uh, go there. It's actually one of the reasons that we were attracted originally the Zanata was, you know, the up weekly updates. It's one of my favorite emails every Monday morning that comes in at 6 a.m. That tells you what time I get up in the morning. But I, I love to look at that and walk through it and look at it. And it's just, it's awesome. That's one of the reasons we've, we've been so dedicated to Zoho. 6 a.m. Yeah, for 191 stop. weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. It's that consistency. You know, you're. it's funny you mentioned that because people, they, uh, I think one time it, something happened and it didn't go out. There was a timing issue with it. Um, and the, it didn't go out at exactly 6 a.m. And the uproar in my inbox, where's the newsletter? Where's the newsletter? What's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I must find out. <laughs> and then we got it out like 20 minutes after that. But uh, it, it that was tells you how meaningful here. it is, right? You're speaking to people and it's very practical and very much you can focus in on what you need to focus in or just disregard the rest. So thank you for doing that effort. 
That's good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All Over right. And five. moving on here uh, uh, for Zoho Show Android now, you have the um, just some enhanced features inside of this. If you're not familiar with Zoho Show, it's their PowerPoint uh, uh, version, their, their, their version of PowerPoint. Um, a lot of the things that are in the desktop have now been added into the Android version. One of the things I like about this app is if you have your phone and you've got an Apple TV, if you have an iPhone user, this is for Android right here, but even if you don't, if you've got an Android and you've got a, what do they call that? Chromecast, either one of those things, Chromecast or an Apple TV, you basically from your phone can give the nicest presentation, use your phone to change the slides, all of those kind of things. It's just uh, really well done. And so they have uh, actually added some, some nice little things in here. I like these uh, two emojis they put in. I think they're nice. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a lot of these updates, too, are related to kind of pulling from some of their content sources that they integrate with. So Daily Motion, yep. Giphy, Twemoji, now you're able to basically just drop those in on your phone the same way you could on your desktop. Yeah, super nice. I have never attempted to create a PowerPoint presentation on my phone, um, <laughs> but I think that would be, uh, for those who can do it, I can see maybe on a tablet you could pull this off, and the tablet app is this is, is great as well. So. Alrighty, and then Zoho Mail has a send later feature, and that has now been added to the iOS version of Zoho Mail. All this means is if you're you wrote an email, maybe you're writing it at eight o'clock at night, and you're like, you know what, I want this to go out at six o'clock in the morning. You can just schedule it to go out and just hit the send later button, and uh, away you go. And then it'll go out in the morning, so you can go ahead and send it, and not even worry about it, think about it. So just a small little update there. And with that, Tyler, let's go to the implementation of the week. Oh man, what do I we love have that new noise there. <laughs> that really makes my day. Uh, shout out to it's Freddie. Little, little, little nod of the head, tip of the hat, little wink yep. wink to uh, Ferris Bueller. <laughs> uh, but uh, there you go. <laughs> Um, so so this have, is an implementation right? that we did for one of our clients that basically does a lot of kind of hourly service billing. Um, they're users of Desk, CRM, and Zoho Books. And for them, a lot of the things that they are going to be billing are all tracked through Zoho Desk. So whether a client fills out a form for some support, sends in an email, places a phone call, you know, all roads end at Zoho Desk for this customer. And then their team is essentially tracking their time spent against those desk tickets. Um, in there, they can define if it was billable or non-billable, right? Which of course will kind of affect the rest of this automation. Um, but the key element to keep in mind is just that, you know, they're billing hourly and it's all essentially running through Zoho Desk. Um, and their ask was, you know, we've got an account for them in the CRM that stores all this relevant data. We've got these invoices and books where each time they need more hours, we're going to send them an invoice for those hours at a certain quantity. But all of our time tracking is happening over in desk. So how do we know who needs to be billed, how many hours someone has remaining, and, and so on and so forth? So essentially what the team did is they created a custom module inside the CRM uh, that can basically capture those time entries. And then they wrote a function inside of desk where each time a time entry is made, it goes to the account on that ticket. It finds the CRM version of that account, and then it logs itself against that account as a little hour log. Um, so that's all happening on that side. We're kind of rolling up, you know, how many hours have been billed, how many hours have been comped based on these time entries. Then on the other side of the equation with CRM and Zoho Books, we have a scheduled function that's running that is actually looking at, you know, inside of Books, how many hours has this customer purchased in their lifetime? What was the most recent purchase size? What was the most recent purchase date? And it's rolling up all of that information back to the account as well. Um, so kind of the account serves as the key object here where all of our time entry data from desk is rolling up there, as well as all of our purchase data from Zoho Books uh, rolls up to the account as well. So then essentially on the account page, you get a perfect view of how many hours they purchased, how many hours are in pending invoices? Maybe you've sent one, but they haven't paid it yet. Um, and then as those CRM entries deprecate those hours lower and lower, 
uh, once they're at either low or zero hours, we can actually automate reminders out to the customer saying, hey, you know, you've got nine or 10 percent of your hours remaining. Click here to let us know that you want another invoice. Um, so it's pretty well optimized here for that kind of hourly support against retainer model. Um, and kind of brings together, I think, three of the applications that we find, um, you know, many, many people are using inside of Zoho uh, with desk, CRM, and books. So do we actually do this for a client? Because I know this is, we do this internally quite a bit. Uh, we um, do it a little differently internally, but yeah, this yeah. is for a client. Nice, 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 nice. I like the idea of um, we don't roll up the hours billed, but yet paid, right? That would be mm -hmm. kind of an interesting one to add in as well. Pretty nice. Yeah. All right. Yes, it was a fun and now one. we have a, go ahead. I said it was a fun one for the team. So shout out to uh, Lucas and Drew who kind of scoped and put this one together. Fantastic. All right. And with that, we have a new segment, Tyler. Code share. <sighs> so in celebration of Club Zanata, hitting 200 users so uh, thank you everybody for joining it um we're kind of really stepping it up over in club zanata but you know if you haven't been paying attention uh gregory has been posting uh new little code snippets that people can use on uh you know in their in their daily life and this week it's open a new tab via deluge so this is one that we use pretty often, um, especially when you're building a custom button. You know, you might have a deal record and a custom button that's going to organize that data and create an invoice in books. Or you might have a custom button that's going to create a document in Zoho Sign from a template. Um, but, you know, oftentimes you kind of press that button and it spins and you get a success message and you know it's created. But now you have to open up books or open up sign, go and find it, open it up there, review it and send it out. Um, but when you're working with custom buttons, you can actually use a little uh, piece of code called open URL uh, that allows you to actually open that in a new tab for whoever pressed the button. Now, there's a couple kind of tricks about this. Uh, you'll see in the code share that Greg is actually creating the URL in the code. Um, because when I create an invoice, I get back the invoice ID, and that actually needs to go into the URL that you want to open. Um, if you look at the code here and you were doing it with like a, a signed document or a writer document, they're all going to have IDs, and that ID is always going to be the end of the URL. Uh, Zoho is very good about the consistency there, so you can pretty much trust this. So if you were doing this to create something that wasn't an invoice, it's going to work almost essentially the same. Um, and then using that open URL, you can actually determine, open it in a new window, open it in a new tab, open it in the tab that they're in now. Um, and they'll actually just direct them straight to the record that the function has created. So it's not a transformative, life-changing thing. It's kind of just an easy and quick way to save a couple clicks uh, when you're automating the creation of a certain record. And if you have not been uh, paying attention, if you go into the code share section, we'll talk about how to get there in a minute, but uh, been busy putting stuff in here. So, you know, export data from Zoho Analytics via API, you know, uh, use of the replace all function, uh, close all stream test the deal, use of the match function. So there's just a whole bunch of stuff. We're committed to posting stuff at least once a week in here now. Uh, we've revamped our overall forms. So we have the general discussion. We've got the code share. Now, Zoho News has been moved from the main Zanata website over here. And we're going to start doing a little bit more with this now. So basically, we'll, rather before we were just kind of saying, hey, here's the news and there's a link to it. Um, now we're kind of putting in a few more details. So you can kind of go in and look at the article. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit about it, what's happening, a little bit more detail around, around what's happening there. Uh, so you can find the news over here as well. And, uh, you know, we always mention this at the end of the show, but also at Club Zanata, that's where you can drop in all your questions for us as well. So um, really nice job. Team spent some time revamping things. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's looking good. It's looking good. So Absolutely. head on over to clubzanata.com. And uh, so much stuff there. Love the code share stuff. And we hope you guys find that useful. And with that, let's get to our read of the week.
All right, Chris. So our, we've got two reads of the week, and they're big ones. Um, this, these come from Fired Up Culture. So if you want any of these, the links to these will be in our newsletter. Um, this first one is from Underperforming to Rockstar, a CEO's roadmap to investing in their leaders. Um, really uh, interesting, uh, interesting stuff here, Chris. So when you download this white paper, um, you guys have put a lot into this. So uh, tell me, uh, tell me what this uh, this is all about. Well, at the heart uh, here, we frankly are all about. Um, investing in people. And at our core value set uh, from day one, we've always said, if we're going to produce content, let's make it meaningful to the leaders who might be reading it, that it could spark some kind of inspiration and give them an opportunity to look at themselves and how they show up in the world. So both this read and the next one are, are certainly going to be specifically talking to leaders uh, around how do you show up in your workplace. Um, we just finished a book recently called Would You Work For You, which I think is a fabulous title because it gets you to think about, are you creating an environment where you want to show up, where people want to show up and give their best and actually um, you know, give 110%, show up as adults, not have to uh, be babysat all day kind of thing. So this first uh, read is, it, meant to be a tool it's meant to be a tool for leaders put it in your uh, toolbox and it, it really is this concept of how do you build a leadership culture um, as organizations go through uh, very sp specific transitions in their history um, you go from a startup where it's one person making all the decisions to now having a, an environment where you need to have a leadership team that is carrying out the values being stewards of the brand working on processes and procedures. And uh, then you get larger and it gets more complex. You have more people in the room trying to get the job done. And if we don't have certain things in place, um, ultimately it's going to create some challenges. Leadership is the, is the uh, core of everything we do in culture. So we love to talk to leaders, work with leaders, partner with leaders. And uh, in, in our work, which we've been doing for about 25 years now, 10 under this brand, uh, we, we believe that we have a very unique um, position to play as a third party that can come alongside leaders, coach them, develop them, and help them really wrestle with the, the unique challenges of where their organization is right now. So this, this particular read is around building that leadership culture. The second read that we, we have available to folks is around the whole idea of culture and as a leader, what should you do with that? Um, I love the second one, particularly because it's more of a workbook where it asks you questions, gives you a place to take some notes, uh, talk through some things, reflect on some things, which again is at the heart of how, how we show up. Uh, people often ask, uh, Brett, they ask me, well, who's your client? And I, my, my immediate answer, anybody that has two people in the room is our client because once you have to get along and work together, uh, there's always this chance that something's going to go haywire. But I would say that our sweet spot of clientele are organizations that are going through heavy growth, having to make significant changes the other direction, which we certainly saw in COVID for a lot of individual organizations, uh, but also organizations that are larger and more complex, have more bureaucracy to them. Uh, and we are change agents. We try and uh, help folks navigate. So these, both of these reads, I think people will find really valuable. Obviously, there's a lot of other blog content on there. We'd love you to sign up for our newsletter, uh, et cetera. But it, it really, the heart of it is we love leadership. We believe leaders are the core to culture, and we want to equip leaders any way we possibly can. Yep. I don't know if we can hear you, Brett. Brett has disappeared. <laughs> I, I call that stuff. leaving the rooms. I, I call yeah. that re leaving the room yeah. stunned and silent. <laughs> I was saying um, it was really good. I don't know. Hopefully, I can get this back exactly. Good. Uh, you know, you've actually helped us tremendously. We went from three people to eight people to nineteen people to twenty-one people, and as we've gone through all of our growth, and we keep growing. Um, you know, we thought, hey, maybe we, we we think we've got a good culture. We think we've been hiring properly all those kind of things. And you and I were just on a call actually around Zoho doing that kind of stuff and started talking about this. And, 
you know, I think one of the best things we've done as an organization was bringing your company in um, to sit there and, you know, you do a, a interesting thing called the Berkman, um, which basically it's not, I guess it's a personality profile in a way you can kind of describe. How would you it's describe a Berkman? A, a, a professional assessment. Yeah. Gets, gets people yeah. to that place where they can better understand who they are and how they show up in the world. Yeah. But I think and, and as important was that as well, it's also then, you know, kind of doing these head to heads and looking at your leadership team and see how everybody reacts differently to things. You can better understand a person and why they might be reacting the way they're acting. And um, really just to get a true understanding of, are you on the right page? Is everybody on the right page? What things do you need to work on um, in your organization to kind of maybe take you to that next level? What are your what are some shortcomings? And every organization has those. And, you know, just to kind of look at those and be able to analyze them. It's been uh, it's tremendously helpful for us. I know the entire leadership team thinks so. Um, I, I know, you know, everyone in the organization, you know, we do the whole culture survey that you guys do what's going on in the organization how do you feel and that everybody participates in that all the way to 360s around each leader um you know working on the deficiencies how you handle those things uh you guys do some great work over there and you know you've got such great assets on your website so it's just firedupculture.com is that correct that's correct that's correct so yeah yeah, I, I, I think you've spoken to kind of uh, some of the core things that we do. And, and, and I, I'm, you know, the culture survey being one of the game changers for us is a, in our growth. Uh, what essentially it does is it, it you, you started the conversation, Brett, talking about you had some assumptions about how it was to work for your organization. You, you've gone through tremendous growth of, of growth over the last couple of years. Uh, the culture survey gets the voice of every one of your team members to the table and says, how do they think it is? What's working? What's not working? And as a leadership team, it really gives you an opportunity to kind of take out the stories that you think are in your mind and make it very tangible. I, I, I attribute it similar to uh, most business leaders get really good at the finance side of their business. You know, they're good with the spreadsheets. They're good at looking at how we're doing health wise. We're not so good on the people side. And uh, we believe most of our processes are trying to get that people equation up equal with the finance piece, because for most businesses, you're not going to be successful unless you have aligned people working in the same direction, bringing their best you know, sharing their gifts and talents with what you're trying to accomplish. And so that's ultimately our goal, whether it's a 360 giving feedback on a particular leader and how they are or are not. Uh, we've done that with both of you um, and the rest of the leadership team at Zanata, the culture survey, which, you know, again, gets all those voices to the table. The assessments that we bring uh, are intended to help people better understand themselves. More importantly, since most of us understand ourselves, it's having a common language to understand how we show up. We can talk about it how it might impact other people, really important. Because culture is one of those words we think we know. We, we as leaders, most of us show up and go, okay, culture's important, I know that. But there's really not a, uh, there, my experience has been, there's not a really common definition of what in there is really important. And we, we've tried to break it down to, yeah, what, do you have clarity of your purpose and goals in the organization? Do you have a sense of how you are teaming and collaborating? Do you have a leadership culture? What is the work environment all about? And I think having some data in those processes has been ext extremely helpful. And the reads of the week are just going to kind of uh, entice you to think about that differently and really leverage that set of tools to build your organization, no matter whether it's a, you know, a five person shop or a 20 person shop, or your history has been, well, two years ago, we were at 50 and now we're down to 20 because we had to lay off half, which certainly our clients have experienced, but others like yourself, where you see that massive growth over a very quick period of time. Um, and, and the good news is Zanata does things right. I mean, one of the reasons you're successful with your clients uh, is I believe you have really, really smart people uh, who are all working together. And, and, and in fact, I talked to one of my practitioners yesterday who works with uh, some of the folks that you guys have on your team. And he said, boy, that is a really smart group of people who are very passionate and very lo uh, loyal to what you're all about. And I, I think that's just a testament to leaders who decide culture is important. It's not just check the box. It's we're going to lean in and we're going to do this really, really well and be intentional about it. 
Well, I would say the same about your team as well. Um, so it's, it's good to work with. And by the way, I've been taking your advice of going to see a therapist now three times, uh, three times a week. And um, I'm almost convinced I'm not a god. So almost, <laughs> so almost, almost got me there. But uh, I know that was a problem in our organization, but I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> Mm. It, it's, right. it's different when you're an entrepreneur and you have built something or started something and, and, and really everything has run through your fingers. And I think that's a great way to learn of, about what your values are, what's important, what is your brand all about? I think it's a, an essential part of the, the process. But if you're going to go to the next place, by the way, I was there five years ago. That was that was our organization. It was a one man shop with a group of uh, just part time folks in the back kind of doing the, the smaller projects to keep things rolling. But I was basically in every room doing everything. And about five years ago, there was this word of impact. How did we want to impact things? And we chose to literally bring on some experts that understood their field, understood the work. And uh, since then, our growth has expanded too. But my job is to protect the brand. How do I build tools like Zoho to support my folks out in the field doing the work that we expect them to do? And at the same time, how do I? How do? How is everybody working together to protect the brand and do the things that are are, are really essential? So I think it's a common story that plays out, but we don't always feel like we have the right resources to to make that occur. I agree. I agree. Well. Uh... Fantastic stuff. Everybody check that out. Uh, I love the little animation Freddie's got going there. A little Very good. Up, little Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Freddie. Yeah, that's good. Shout <laughs> check, out. Check, check out firedupculture.com. And with that, let's check out what's new over at Zanata. Hey, Tyler, we've got kind of a longer read here. Seven strategies to boost your customer experience, sometimes called CX. Um, and so just so nice seven tips as to what you could do to maybe make your, uh, your life a little easier when dealing with your customers. Yeah, and a lot of this here is kind of about the education and providing options to engage with you that kind of minimize friction as well as you know what needs to happen after the purchase has been made because CX is not just sales you know it's all of the fulfillment implementation and support that happens afterwards um, so nice write up by the team here and definitely worth taking a look at that's right all right and with that let's get to our application of the week or pick of the week I guess we call it these days this kind of ties off of the new uh, WorkDrive 3.0. One of the features they had was WorkDrive Genie. Um, it's in beta for Mac OS. Uh, this is interesting. So I've got it installed. I've been working with it. Now I know it's in beta, so they're working through this right now. But um, you can be inside WorkDrive and now open a file using an external application and then when you save that file, it's going to save it back to WorkDrive. Um, just because of the very nature of those, it's also saving something to your desktop as well. But it's it's gonna it's actually going to save that file back to WorkDrive. It, um, it it's interesting right now in that you know you it's like got Adobe Photoshop and Paint and all of those kind of things. I have tried to open an Excel file and it it doesn't seem to be recognizing either mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Apple Numbers or Microsoft Excel at this moment. It still wants to Got open it. those in the native apps, but um, you know, for some of the bigger image generating and video handling stuff, like for example, when I want to open a video, it wants to open it in QuickTime. So it, it's got it's it, it's it's got some really nice features, and I think this has a lot of potential. Yeah, especially given that it's in an open beta right now. You know, yep. of course, they're going to be adding more and more compatibility, but I mean, for, for those that are in graphic design or anything in that space where you have to do a lot of like edits and revisions, I mean, you're going to have to work with that outside of WorkDrive. You know, you're not going to be redesigning your whole PDF in there itself. You're going to have to pop it out. Um, so really nice to have and the ability just to save right back to the file in WorkDrive. It's going to save you a lot of time. Kind of curious how they how they do this. How, how this even I don't really know. Works. It does work though. Oh, I mean, I've opened really a couple of the, the so like the the, cool. the video, yeah, video editing works. Uh, 
picture editing works, those kind of things. It's cool. I love it. You know, I think for a lot of people, um, the ability to open something in Excel, right? Because mm -hmm. you're a lot of people still in Excel, they're using Work Drive. That would really be, that would be interesting. I don't know if they're going to come up with that or not, but um, it's cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Not, it's Tyler, not what I thought. You're, it's Tyler, fun. you're not supposed to understand how it works. That's why it's called Genie. <laughs> Fair enough. It's, it's <laughs> just a genie. It does. It. And by the way, they came up. I can't. I don't think I can find it. But they've come up with the coolest little icon for it. Let me see if I go. I think it's download link now. The, the, their, their icon. They've basically taken the work drive folder and they've put a little like top knot on it. <laughs> kind of. It's got oh, yeah. a like Very a little nice. genie, like a little genie tail coming out. So they, they've done a really nice job on the on the logo there. All right. Just as just as, an end, as an end user, I downloaded this app as well and uh, am playing with it. And I, 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 it's got lots of promise. Really, really good. Make life a lot easier. Yeah, I, I, it really does. And there's a Windows version of it as well. Um, I don't know if that's in beta. I think Windows is actually out there. I don't think it's in beta. I think the iOS version is the only one in beta. So if there's any Windows users out there using this, I'd love to know if with that version, if they've actually connected to some of the Office applications. That'd be pretty cool. And with that, let's get to our tip of the week. Mr. Hollywood is at it again, Tyler, um, with Drew Brockbank with what is a CRM? And he basically is going to tell you what a CRM is, why you need it, how you need it, all of those kind of things. And uh, he's doing a it's an exceptional job stepping you through all of that. And this is a bit, he took his time on this one. It's 23 minutes and five seconds. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, a ni nice little video. I I did notice that somewhere on the calendar to, to go ahead. I didn't say anything. You were saying, I thought you said something. I did notice that somewhere on the calendar, I, I am seeing that there is a meet, there was a Hollywood think tank. Uh, where we're actually having Drew and Wayne are getting together since they're both doing uh, videos now to, to figure out what's going to happen in Hollywood there. But uh, it's good stuff from the team yeah, over there. This is a great video. So Drew kind of breaks down, you know, first, what is a CRM at a high level? And then different stakeholders or groups that might need to engage with the CRM. And then even goes further and kind of, you know, in this image here, if you're watching us on YouTube, is actually going through and breaking down the various functionalities that are in the CRM. And this is this will apply to Zoho as well as other CRMs. You know, they might have different words for some of these things, but um, kind of breaks down who might use what kind of functionality in the CRM so that if you're building one of these yourself, you kind of know who to get involved and what's in the toolbox. Um, so again, great job to Drew, aka Mr. Hollywood, on putting this one together. Uh, this is definitely a labor of love here as uh, so it took a lot of prep and work. Yeah, it's good good stuff there. And we break everything down with timestamps. You can kind of jump around a whole lot of timestamps on this one, getting to the various areas that he's covering. So uh, really, uh, really nice stuff from there. And as always, if you head over to youtube.com slash Zanata, that is where you will find all of our videos um, on pretty much anything and everything. So worth, uh, worth checking that out. And of course, please hit that subscribe button. We'd, uh, we'd love, and you know, and also that little bell. So, you know, whenever we post something new, um, which is often, we at least post uh, two, three times a week. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for that and uh, nice job there, Drew. And I think that's going to take us to some Q and A. All right, Tyler, Mr. Uh, Bilal Zafar asks, after watching our inventory settings video, uh, please tell me how I can change my default warehouse. I've created two warehouses and the first is primary, but I want to make the second primary. We'll wait for your reply. Thanks a lot. There should be when you're looking at your warehouses inside of inventory. I actually checked this one before the show just to make sure. Um, inside of the like list of warehouses inside of inventory on the right hand side, I guess I'm mirrored, so I'll go over here. On the right-hand side, there should be a little cog or like menu icon um, that's on each of the warehouses. And under that little submenu, you should be able to mark it as primary. Um, so it seemed from their material that it should be there. Um, if it doesn't show up for you there, please ask us again, make sure I understand the question right. But it should just be under that warehouse list, kind of on the right-hand side of the page under the warehouse that you want to make primary. 
All right. And Rachel Stack over on Club Zanata asks, we have our org set up with roles so that our ops team has access to all of our sales force, our sales data to help manage clients. I would like to know if there is a way that the sales owner of an account slash contact or another module can see the related lists when they are the owner, but may have an item on a related list assigned to someone else that is working it like a case task, et cetera. Example, a task assigned to ops for one of the clients, the sales owner is no longer able to see the task. Zoho support said that we can change the task to public, but if sales went to their activities task module, they would be able to see all tasks, even on accounts, contacts they do not own. Is there another way around this? I have searched the Zoho and Zanata communities and videos and keep running into dead ends. Any help would be greatly appreciated. So there is a way around this. Um, it would require some deluge code. Really what you would need to do is you need to define, I'll use tasks as an example. You might have other related lists and they would need to be set up separately. Um, but inside of a task, what you could actually do is um, when a task is created, run a little custom function triggered by a workflow that checks the owner of the related object, whether that's a customer, whether that's an opportunity, you'd kind of need to um, define a priority if you want to maybe say, hey, look at the opportunity if that's there. Otherwise, look at the contact or look at the account to determine the owner. Um, and so once you do that, you'll be able to grab the owner ID of that record and bring it back and actually use the share API to share that task back to whoever the owner of that opportunity was. It's a little bit roundabout, um, but that definitely would get the job done. Now, the other option, um, you would use that option, option A here, uh, if you need the salesperson to be able to like open up that task or maybe close out that task on behalf of the ops team member. If you don't need the salesperson to interact with them at all, and they just need to have visibility, you know, task name, who it's assigned to, the due date and the status, you could do this with a custom related list using XML. Um, the custom related lists will actually override user sharing permissions. So you could set up, again, you're going to need some deluge and now XML to get this one done. Um, but you could have a little custom list that when you load an opportunity, gets all of the related tasks regardless of ownership and displays them to whoever's opening that opportunity. A couple ways to do it. Option two would probably be better if you don't need them to make any edits. Um, if you do need them to make edits, you'll have to set up some type of trigger-based workflow to essentially uh, dynamically share the tasks to whoever owns that parent record. All right. And we've got a couple questions in the chat room. We'll start with Dan Pease. He is asking, uh, how do most companies back up work drive data? If a user is synced to a shared folder and gets hit with ransomware, how would the admin restore the data? Well, I think there's a common problem across any, you know, cloud-based storage solution. Um, the way we do it is I have an external drive on uh, connected to my PC and WorkDrive has a full synchronization ability. So you can have everything local and you can save it. And I just have that completely 100% stored in real time on that drive. Now, if I got hit with ransomware, I guess that would be useless. But the cloud would mm -hmm. still be up <laughs> during that. You would still have the cloud, at least. I mean, if the cloud went down and you got hit with ransomware simultaneously, I guess you'd be uh, you'd be in a little bit of trouble there. But I don't know, Tyler. Any other ideas? Thoughts? Yeah, that's that's about it. Unfortunately, I mean, I, there isn't any uh, pre-baked tool that's going to back up work drive on an automated basis. All right. And then Keystone Compliance has a question. They say, love your content. Question, is there a way to get follow-up emails out to leads after a day, week, month of not opening a quote? Leads or contacts? Yes. Yes, if the quote is sent via email from the CRM. So um, essentially in the CRM, let's say I'm going to make a quote and I'm going to send it out to a lead. What I'd want to do is create a specific email template with an identifiable subject line that I'll always use to send out the quote. Um, then within the workflows in the CRM, um, you actually have email-based workflows. 
And so what you could do is set up a workflow, let's say for leads and say, if an email is sent and it's been three days and the subject line is insert your templated subject line and it's not opened, then send another email or make a task or, you know, do whatever needs to be done. The only part that that would kind of you'd lose out on is you don't technically know they opened the quote, assuming you're sending it as like a PDF, you won't really be able to track all the way through to that, but you could surely know if they opened or clicked the email itself. Um, so you can base it more on like the email subject line and you should be able to get most of what you need. All right. And over at Club Zanata, Ted Wolf asks, uh, just in case anyone might have some more information about the seemingly continued challenges with importing bank feeds into Zoho Books automatically, I have a support ticket open with Zoho since mid-February with the same response every time I ask. It's the third party's fault. Uh, it would be lovely to have this working properly. I did find a workaround with adding CV, I think he means CSV files, with downloaded transactions from the bank working all right, but that's too much effort for most clients. Just imagine if you could offer the whole Zoho One package, including Zoho Books app for less than QBO subscription. Anyhow, any thoughts? Thank you. So Zoho Books uses a third party processor whose name is escaping me right now. It's something like Util, I think. I think I actually have that right. Um, and they're usually very good. Um, I do find that the automated bank feeds um, occasionally seem to break for really off-brand banks. They usually can fix this inside of a day or two um, if you open a case with Zoho. But Ted, what you're telling me, I heard a similar story from another client where Zoho saying, yep, it's fixed, but it's not. Yep, it's fixed, but it's not. And I got on with the client. We disabled the bank fees. We re-enabled. We put in the new credentials, we did the authentication, we've got everything, and guess what? Nothing ever gets pulled in. Uh, it says there's a problem on the bank's end. Uh, you know, you open a ticket, Zoho talks to Util, Util says it's fixed, it's not. Um, so there doesn't, it, it seems awfully rare. Um, this is, you know, I think I've heard where this hasn't been fixed. This is the second time. Uh, normally it's just fixed, but it seems like maybe this is prop, you know, cropping up more and more right now. I don't know, but I don't have any other thoughts. I know they do have, Tyler, don't they have like an, you know, you can just drag and drop like the PDF or the statement into, that's one of the new things in books, right? You can yeah, drop it in and it'll so. read that. I'm not sure how well it works. PR. Yeah, it's the, the tricky thing with that is you don't really want to trust OCR to set your bank account levels and make entries to chart of accounts and things like that. Like, and that's not a Zoho thing. That's just OCR in general. It's an imperfect science. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a tricky one. It's, it seems like a moving, moving target for Zoho where it gets fixed, new bugs kind of show up, gets fixed again. It's always on a cycle. It seems like. Yeah. Brett, can I jump in on this one as an end user? Yeah. Come on in, Chris. We, 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 so we made the transition from QuickBooks to books uh, in our firm about two years ago. We actually did a year of uh, double, double books um, to make that process happen. And the bank feed issue uh, ha had shown up a couple times throughout that process. Uh, we found the reset, kind of starting over, redoing that, took care of that problem. And we have actually not had any problems since even with our particular bank who seems to be very security conscious and want to always update their code. Um, we have more, we have more problems with our uh, check scanners than we do our, uh, our bank feeds anymore. So um, I'm not sure. I just think it's a really unique issue per person versus yeah. a system wide thing that we've found, but it, the reset was the way that it got resolved for us. Yeah. And I found Chris that, you know, so I've got chase B of a fifth third all connected and there's, there's strangeness, like from one books account to the next. I mean, sometimes you'll go in and you'll look. And so Chase is a good one because it automatically pulls and brings them all in. B of A requires yeah. two-factor authentication across the board. So if you go to B of A, every time you have to put a phone number in, it's going to send a code to you. You got to put the code in and that pulls the bank feed. So that's an understandable kind of thing there. But you'll find sometimes I'll go and I'll look at one of the accounts that's on Chase and it's it hasn't pulled in anything for a week. And I hit refresh and it instantly pulls it in. 
On the other hand, I'll look at the other account and it's completely up to date. It's been pulling it in every single day. So there's, there is a little bit, I, there's no settings for that. Um, it's just kind of some, some strangest, but I, I agree with you. Normally you just hit refresh feeds and you know, three minutes later, you've got all, all your stuff in there. Um, if it's not waiting for you the next morning. So, and with that, Chris, thank you so much for joining us, buddy. Really appreciated having you, you. Uh, with us here today. It, it, it did at moments feel a little bit like a love fest, but honestly, that comes from a place really deep in my heart. You guys have been awesome for us as we've launched, and thank you for all your support. Well, you're all welcome, right, and uh, again, thanks, thank you for joining us. On. Now, as a client of you, we get to be the ones enjoying the service, so <laughs> thank you for your time spent awesome. on us as well. Absolutely. And with that, everybody, we're going to wrap it up. If you have any questions or comments, you know where to go. Head over to clubzanata.com. Drop us a question. We will answer it on next week's show. Or just visit zanata.com and check out all the cool stuff we've got over there. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes, as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, we'd love if you would follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Good show, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you again, Chris. Yep. Thank you, buddy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Everybody have a great day.